Hello, everyone. It's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. Guys, I have with me an, an amazing interview today, Professor Emeritus at Arizona University, Guy McPherson. Please tell the audience hello. Hey, Jamal. Thanks for having me on the show today. I look forward to our conversation. I am happy to have you on the show today. I am happy to have this conversation. I'm excited to have this conversation. I do climate stuff periodically. And I do it periodically because I don't want to necessarily, I don't want to hit it every day because people will be like, oh God, he's hitting this every day. And it's like, you're hitting this every day and I can't do anything in this specific moment. But I hit it periodically because I still want to keep it in the public's mind of there is an asteroid that is about to hit the planet and we're pretending that there's not an asteroid there. The scientists on this planet are coming together and saying, this is a problem, this is gonna be catastrophic. And you have an economic system and a political system based purely on fiction that is, that is letting that fiction be the governance over natural law and natural reality. That's the way I see this. So I love it. company out there. I view climate change as a symptom of this set of living arrangements. And most people I talk to say, I, I check in with climate science now and then. And that's how most people find me, actually, is they're checking in with climate science. They haven't really studied anything for a few years. They go on YouTube. They follow a couple of things. My name pops up. Bam, all of a sudden, they're in, in the midst of abrupt, irreversible climate change. Which is, <laughs> you know, a whole different thing than what Al Gore was telling us 10 years ago. That's hilarious, the, um, the, the alternative to climate change. Um, let me ask you this. You went with this idea of abrupt climate change. Now, could you explain to the audience what abrupt climate change is? Sure. You know, contrary to the relatively gradual increase in global average temperature that most of us have heard about, that is influenced primarily by carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So that's the story most of us have heard, is that if we just make a few tweaks to the system here and there, we can slow or stop this thing. But in fact, we're in the midst of abrupt climate change, a phenomenon which actually has historical precedence in planetary history, although not with humans present, because it's pretty clear that humans wouldn't survive such an event. Yeah. But, you know, so this is kind of an unusual event in terms of planetary history. It's abrupt. It's not gradual. And here we're faced with the classic damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. We maintain this set of living arrangements, which we affectionately call civilization. Then we continue to warm up the planet. And if we stop because it's heating up the planet, then because of a process called global dimming, we actually heat the planet even faster. So it's a classic no way out situation in which we keep burning fossil fuels and therefore we keep heating the planet or we stop burning fossil fuels. We stop putting sulfates up into the atmosphere. They all fall out. Six weeks later, the planet warms up catastrophically well beyond that at which humans have ever persisted on this planet in the past. So Wait, you, you lost me for a moment, just to put a pin in it. You said if you stop, I, from my understanding, if we stopped all carbon and all creation today, eat for 10 years, there'll still be a warming of the planet, just almost like by, by inertia, by momentum um, alone. But you're saying something else. You're saying sulfates. What does that have to do with increasing the temperature if we stopped putting this stuff in, this, in, in the sky today? You know, it's really interesting that so few people know about this and that so few climate scientists, scholars of climate science actually talk about it. But at the same time, industrial activity is putting those greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that we all know about that serve as a blanket to hold the heat down close to the planet. At the same time industrial activity does that, burning fossil fuels, mostly coal, mostly dirty coal, also puts up sulfates into the atmosphere, or they're sometimes called aerosols, and those aerosols or sulfates actually block incoming sunlight. They act as an umbrella. And, mm -hmm. and so th we're in this situation of doing two things at once, and most people don't know that we're doing something that is actually beneficial with respect to burning fossil fuels, and that has a very quick turnaround time. Burning fossil fuels, especially poor quality coal, puts these umbrellas, these aerosols into the atmosphere that prevent the sunlight from ever coming into the atmosphere. They act as an umbrella. So if we stop burning coal 
today. Let's just all decide we're going, we came home from the latest climate change march and therefore we're never going to burn coal again. Well, in about six weeks, all those sulfates would fall out of the sky and the planet would heat up catastrophically quickly. And I, I can't imagine humans surviving that. So this is a classic yeah. damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Wow. Okay. I, I, yeah, I did not know about the sulfates thing. That's a new one. Like, like, I knew, from my understanding, okay, so taking the sulfates out for the moment, is it also true, though, that for 10 years, the planet would warm up? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. The, the maximum heating associated with carbon dioxide molecules occurs about 10 years after the emission of them. So you fired up the internal combustion engine, turn on the lights in your house, whatever. 10 years later, the maximum heating associated with those molecules occurs. They begin heating the planet right away, but the maximum heating is delayed. Wow, that's terrifying. Because you know, what that means is the sulfates are going into the air and to some degree providing some percentage. Do you know what the percentage of reflection associated with warming? Like, do you know what the percentage of warming change would be from the standpoint of having sulfates in the atmosphere versus having sulfates out? Yeah, a, a recent paper, I think it was just out yesterday, maybe the day before, indicates that about half, approximately half, and I think that's pretty conservative, about half of the heating also leads to cooling. So, for example, we're about one and three quarters degrees above the 1750 baseline, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. So let's say we're at 1.7, then we, we tack on an additional 0.85 degrees that is actually cooling. So if we, and, and a, a paper by James Hansen and colleagues, the first one to my knowledge in the referee journal literature was in December, 2011. It indicates 1.2 plus or minus 0.2 degrees Celsius associated with global dimming. So those sulfates, mostly sulfates associated with burning mostly poor quality coal account for a little over one degree Celsius. That's an absolutely huge number, especially given the rapidity of the change if we stop burning. A subsequent paper, a follow-up paper by Levy and colleagues in 2013 indicates that we can expect up to a one degree Celsius global average temperature rise by reducing carbon emissions by only 35%. So that's a pretty low reduction in industrial activity. It's like one in three of us deciding Oh, we're not gonna we're gonna opt out of the system today. Yeah. And and that would lead to up to a one degree Celsius global average temperature rise, which would be absolutely catastrophic. I don't think any human beings would survive that because we would lose habitat for our species so quickly. That's amazing. I mean, we're experiencing wildfires, hurricanes, so like all of this aberrant weather behavior, as is. And what you're saying is people like me pushing for a green energy new deal i want it for various reasons um environment being one of those reasons i like to breathe clean air and i like clean water and i, I you know the climate change thing is real to me um but you're telling me that we are destroying the planet by trying to push to save the planet that you know, ultimately the very act of trying to lower the amount of carbon that we or we're dumping into the air and the atmosphere will in effect cause our planet to heat up that much faster. Believe me, I'm the last one who wants to believe this. I moved off grid beginning in 2007. So that's more than a decade ago. I started making these profound changes in my lifestyle to move off grid, walk away from the monetary system, the whole thing, set an example that people would follow. And if they had followed, we'd be, we'd all be gone by now. I have no doubt about that. That is mind blowing. But, like that's, let me ask you this. For people who say that this is bunk, because every so often there will be a random guy who said, you know what, the scientists who are talking about this, they're just making this up. Or they would say, this is a planetary phenomena and Venus is heating up. Like they're just these weird pr pronunciations, like they know what's taking place on Venus. What do you say to those people who say that the science on this is off? that it's some kind of planetary phenomena, something to that effect, or that it's a sun issue, that the sun itself is doing this, not necessarily something we're doing on this planet. You know, I've studied all of those, all of those debunkification style arguments. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've been studying this issue since I was in graduate school in the early 1980s. And I can assure you there's nothing there. I hear all this stuff. 
I have spent my entire adult life pursuing evidence. I've tried to track down those pieces of evidence. There's no indication that all the other planets are warming up to. <clears throat> There's no indication that we're that greenhouse gases are not having a profound effect. The, the first referred journal literature goes back to April of 1896 for crying out loud. We've known the mechanism. We know how it works down to the finest detail. And we've known for a long time. So I would like to believe that my individual actions, that my going on tour to present this information, that my staying in a hotel and turning the lights on and off and, and, using hot water. I like to think that all that has no negative consequences. I'd like to think that the civilization I inhabit is not inherently racist, is not inherently misogynistic, is not inherently promoting a horrific monetary system that makes the rich richer and the poor poorer. But I know better than that. Yeah. And not so to mention, Exxon Mobil. Away. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, the, there was a, a, a gap in the in the thing. I'm sorry. Finish, finish. No, no, no. I'd like to think that all those things were not actually happening, but I know better. And so I can't look away. And you and a lot of your followers, they can't look away either. They know what's going on in the world. We'd like to think that that we are actually good people and that all of our actions are for the benefit of humankind and all of the organisms on the planet. But you don't have to dig very deep to discover that that's actually not true, that there are consequences of this incredibly privileged life that we get to have here in the 21st century in the United States. I mean, any, any time, any civilization that you can do things like dial on your phone, which, by the way, can be used about, for about a thousand other things as well. You can dial the pizza guy and have it at your doorstep in 15 minutes. You've got to think that there's some cost associated with that besides the yeah. 95 for the pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the wild part, ExxonMobil, I think back in the 80s, did experiments finding that climate science was real. And I try to make this point of if ExxonMobil themselves, like if anybody had a reason to say, no, this is nonsense, this is bogus, it would be ExxonMobil. And yet, I lost you for about a minute there, and I can no longer see you or hear you, Jamal. Thank you. 
downstairs, which is the second part. 